Hi everyone, I'm Alison and this is Ellie. We're both law students at the University of Dundee and today we're just going to talk about the different opportunities that Dundee gives for law students and what it's like during exams. So question one is what are exams like in Dundee? So it normally works that we have exams at the end of each semester. We have them around Christmas time. It's just before Christmas, which is really nice because then you can relax all Christmas. You don't have to worry about revising over Christmas. And then we have them around April, May, just before getting off. My exams this year are on the 24th of April and the 1st of May, but it can be up until the end of May. I do two modules a semester. I do English law and Ellie does Scottish law. So this year I had EU law and property law. We basically had online exams at the end of the year and it was a six hour exam. We had to write three essays and it was from like 9.15 until 3.15. The word count for that was like 3,000 words. So that's roughly a thousand words per essay. 3,000 is the max. So it doesn't matter if you're slightly below that. And then we have coursework, which I think is worth, it's normally between 25% and 30% depending on the year. So the coursework is like one essay. So for the coursework, we have a good couple of weeks to complete it and the word count is normally 1,500 words, sometimes it can be a thousand words. So a problem question, like we'll normally get something like, it'll be like a list of facts about someone's situation and it's like, advise this person on their legal rights, something like that, which I really like because yeah. you actually do feel like you're a proper lawyer. <laughs> I feel like there's lots to dissect. It's a very real life situation. Or an essay question, one that we got was, the creation of a single market requires removal of customs barriers between the EU member states, discuss critically. I'm at level two because I've got a four year degree compared to Alison who's at level three because it's only a three-year degree and at level two it depends on the module again in first and second year you'll have multiple choice questions for exams mine are in-person closed book two-hour exams all my modules have been multiple choice questions apart from one which was a six-hour exam. How do you prepare for your exams? Well firstly it's important to be attending all your classes during the year if you miss anything you need to catch up because it is just about building like, an understanding yeah, of the like, law. Normally what I'll do is I'll go through each topic in a module sort of systematically and make sure I'm doing any reading that I missed out on just trying to understand it jotting down any key things to know like cases or statutes that are relevant I try not to go too note crazy because I think it's more just about understanding how the law operates towards certain scenarios what the courts tend to rule for certain things and law I think is good in the way that things can can go either way and it is just about like arguing your case it definitely depends on the module for modules that are very like content heavy you'll often find quizlets online or I like to make little flashcards if I'm having to memorize stuff whereas if it is just more like issues you should know the law surrounding the issue but it is more about like how you structure your essay how you argue and how you show that you've understood and I think the textbooks that they recommend are extremely helpful yeah I just wanted to quickly show you an example of one of our core module books for my property law module and it's just got a list of all the different topics that we study it gives key cases that are important to remember and summaries of them and then it gives little summaries of all the important things that you need to remember and it gives you some little questions to just help with revision just to really get you thinking about what you might be asked and it also gives you some study tips as well. So I'll normally just go through the book and highlight bits throughout the year and write down some notes and annotate. Some people I know like to do mind maps as well. Personally, I don't really, I prefer just jotting it down on a Word document. If I have enough time, I'll do mind maps. They are very, <laughs> very time consuming. And in terms to like everyday lifestyle, I, I tend to go to the library just as early as I feel like. And I leave around five to six to come home for dinner and it just means you can be on campus and like do all your work and then come home and I don't tend to work at night. And it gives you that feel of really being at university and being in a routine, which I think is really helpful. How much time do you devote to your studies? I remember whenever I was looking at all the different universities and attending online open days because it was during COVID, it was all online. A lot of lecturers were recommending to treat law as a nine to five job, obviously with breaks in between, which I remember thinking, oh my goodness, that's yeah. quite a lot. But it is quite ideal just sort of getting up, going to the library, as we said, just getting into a routine of that. But I tend to be easy on myself and I think that it's important to like read yourself and your body because if I'm getting too tired, you know, I'll wake up at nine, I'll wake up a bit later go to the library and just don't burn out like not yeah. let myself burn because out because at the end of the day if your brain's not like if your body's tired and you're exhausted like your brain's not going to be taking in the information and you're just wasting your time and i think sometimes if i'm just too tired to go to the library i'll just work from home i do think the nine to five is a good yeah. target just to sort of structure yourself on even if you're not really rigidly sticking to that next question is what facilities for studying do you use on dundee campus the obvious one would be the main library and i think is it four floors is ground floor level one level two and they've got a mix of different study sections so you've got the group study quiet section and the silent section just depending on what 
works what best works for, for you. you. You can also book rooms if you are wanting to do a study group, you can do that as well. There's the law library, so there's loads of resources there. And then there's other libraries, there's like a medical library, but I think that's at nine miles. Or as well, we sometimes use the Scrimgeour building. There's a yeah. wee library there, which I really like too. There are computers as well. If you don't want to bring your laptop, you can, you can log into your MyDundee at the library yourself there. And there's also a wee cafe at the library. There's the Liar Bar at the Union, the Prem, like it's all just there. Everything you need is nearby. And then it's very handy for if you just want to pop out for lunch and then go right back to studying. And water filling stations, toilets, mm -hmm. everything you need. How does the grading system work? Coursework is all marked out of 23. That will equate to like an A1. So it's like A1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. Right. E1, 2, 3. C1, 2, 3. D1, 2, 3. And then D3 is a 10, which is the last passing grade. Below that, it's an M and is a fail. An A1 would be like 23. Yeah. An A5 um, is 20, isn't it? 19. 19. Any A grade equivalates to a first class degree, any B grade to 1, C a 2-2 two, two, and then a D a 3. Repeats also occur in summer. It gives you the chance to still pass because otherwise you'll have to be taking that module into your next year or be repeating your entire year. And I think it's just the same with all unis really. Yeah. Uh, but it's not always a deal breaker if you fail like, your coursework, you're not necessarily going to fail the module, like if you fail the exam or the coursework because you have an opportunity to pull yourself up then. So whenever I was in first year, I literally failed my first ever coursework. I remember crying to my mum like, oh my gosh. But I managed to pass with a, a fairly good mark as well. I think I got like a B something yeah. because I just pulled it up in the exam. It's quite nice because you do have the weighting. So if you don't necessarily do that well in one, you can pull it up in the other. Next question is what happens if you hand in work late or what things do you need to be mindful of? So a mark off every day that you're late for the coursework and then after a certain month of Days, you do just fail it yeah keep um, in mind that if it is for serious reasons like that have affected your coursework you can always apply for mitigating circumstances if you've been really ill but you're struggling with your mental health or you've lost a family member they will be accounted for in this case in circumstances if it's an online exam i'm not actually sure but i think it is an automatic fail if you're yeah. late because it is an exam like if yeah. you're at home doing an online exam and you and it in later they're gonna have to fail you it's the same concept as you just not showing up for an exam yeah things you need to be careful about academic misconduct and plagiarism so just ways to avoid that so academic misconduct is collusion yeah so don't be um, working with people yeah and if you're doing like an online exam make sure you're doing it independently don't be speaking to other people because you might do similar sharing, work yeah, sharing and then, ideas and it flags up and then plagiarism and stuff like that you just make sure you're referencing everything and you'll be fine you're taught how to reference and do everything properly and there's a lot of like online resources that help you and you're taught as well um, yeah, in like, first year the foundations of law module yeah. all about just really getting into it and getting yeah. the hang of it. Speaking about referencing, the next question is how do you reference or do bibliographies? Bibliographies are very straightforward, I think. Once you get the hang of it, it's just you're writing down all the primary and secondary sources that you've used for your assessment. Yeah. Um, you don't have to do that in an actual exam. You don't no. intend to have to do bibliographies, but that's important for like your dissertation coursework. or coursework. Most law degrees use OSCOLA, which is the Oxford system for legal referencing. What are the different law degrees offered at Dundee University? There's loads. So we've got the Scots Law Degree, which is four years. Ellie's yeah. doing that. And then I'm doing the English Law Degree, which is three, three years. years. And then there's also Dual Law, which is both. both. Yeah. Four years. You can also do Energy Law. You can do Law with a Language, French Law and Spanish. You can also kind of mix and match. So you can do English Law Degree with Energy Law, specialised in Energy Law. Do Scots Law Degree, specialised in Energy Law. Options for later on. You can do a conversion year, because I'm doing the English Degree. I can do an extra year for Scots Law, so then that will be me coming out essentially with two degrees, which is brilliant. I don't really know what other unis offer that, I think it's quite a it unique thing. It is quite a unique thing. At Dundee, I think, whenever I was looking, it was one of the only Scottish universities that actually offered an English law degree. That's three years. I just wanted to do it three years because why do four years if you can do three years? This means I can do another year and I'll come out with two degrees. You can also stay on and do a master's and specify in a specific area of law, so like international law, environmental law, anything like that. Dundee also offers the diploma if you want to become a solicitor. Obviously you have to do your diploma so you can stay here for all five years and after that go on to a traineeship. What are your module choices like? We both got to pick our modules for next year so it's yeah. third year whenever you start picking your own fields to go you into. You get like one or two little options in second year so I got to choose. I did law technology and innovation. I'm doing two modules in first semester and then one module in second semester along with the dissertation so obviously dissertation lots of work you don't have to do as many modules because of that. So I'm picking medical law, criminal procedure and intellectual property law. That's like 
property of ideas and like copyright and things like that i'm very excited to start that and there's other options you have the same list of options what did yeah. you pick i pick information law composition and regulation law intellectual property law and then i also had to pick a 15 credit module and i picked legal skills which is like letter writing language to use stuff like that i next year only have one obligatory module do you have no you don't I have no obligatory, no obligatory i've already done all of the yeah. ones for my in first year and second year we covered foundations of law, public law, court law, criminal law and then this year it was EU law, property law, equity and trusts. I feel like I probably missed something but that's yeah. those are like all the main obligatory modules. And then with Scots it's like private law instead of court and contract and Scots criminal law instead of English criminal law but yeah it's the same idea. With the dual qualifying degree I actually used to do dual. I did my first year and half of my second year as a dual student. I decided to switch to Scots stream just because there was a change in the system in England so you no longer we need a specifically English law degree to qualify in England so I thought on the off chance that I want to go to England I don't actually need it anymore. What are your classes like and hours per week? I would say a law degree in relation to other degrees it tends to be less in-person stuff it's more independent work and then meeting up to discuss that work so yeah we don't actually have as many hours as I'd say a lot of other subjects would have you know like medicine are in 24 7 up yeah. at the hospital like doing a lot of practical stuff whereas for us it is a lot of giving mm -hmm. a list this is what you have to do prepare yourself do this yourself and then come into class and we'll discuss these. Is it maybe like 10 to 12? 10 to 12 hours a week maybe? 10 to 12 hours a week so it does change depending on what year you're in. So in first year you're in quite a bit you have a lot more lectures one or two tutorials a week. In second year you have a couple less lectures and then when you go into third year you have more <laughs> seminars and then fourth year obviously you're doing your dissertation so you have way less lectures couple seminars and then it's a lot of your own work. I think as well lectures tend to fizzle out a wee bit like the further you get into your degree. Second year I still think we had a good few lectures but for me I had no lectures for property law it was very much seminar based. Lectures are normally for beginning students and then for whenever you're older you have them for the more complicated subjects it's very much seminar based and I quite enjoy that because it's just like read this try to understand this and then come into class and we'll talk about it. I definitely prefer tutorials and seminars because it's interactive so I feel like lectures are more like information explaining whereas, stuff explaining yeah. stuff whereas seminars it's discussion and it's groups and questions and, and questions. Yeah. It's really nice whenever you you get further into your degree and you've sort of got that experience under your belt and you know how to be studying what yeah. works for you it's nice because you can pick your modules based off what works for you I know I do best in coursework so I've picked I think two of my modules are completely coursework based I just much prefer coursework I do so much better at it you get a modules fair and they tell you about all the different modules how it's taught what yeah. equates to what and they tell you oh this is going to be a very seminar based module or oh this is going to have lectures at this point this is and it's really nice because then at that point you know what you want the next question is what textbooks are necessary you're given a list of all the necessary textbooks at the very start of every semester and they can come and quite a range of prices they can get quite expensive but there's so many different options if you can't afford that there are a lot of older students who are always looking to sell their old books sometimes they're nice because they're annotated with someone who's done the course and they'll sell them for a lot cheaper otherwise most of the textbooks are provided with a link online the uni yeah. provides you with links and you can access them for free or there's also the copies of the books in the library that you can borrow so there's so many different options but I do personally prefer having a hard copy in person just so I can highlight it there are websites online whenever they send you a link you can make your own account you can annotate it online and yeah. it'll save all of your annotating so yeah there's so many ways around having to buy Thanks. those <laughs> on the resource list they'll suggest further reading extra stuff it's definitely not obligatory to have every single book on the resource list However, then normally for each module, there'll always be at least one core textbook that it's recommended that you have, whether you're getting it from the library, whether you've bought it yourself or online yeah what societies are there for law students so the main one would be the law society ellie's actually a committee member of the law society and she'll be on it next year as well fundraiser yeah. does done the university law society is a law society run by law students for law students all the committee members are law students at various stages in their law degrees they aim at running a careers events events between different years to get to know each other so social events Stuff cultural like evenings the big one to mention that was like really big this year was the inter-university varsity event with Aberdeen and Glasgow so you get the chance to meet law students from different universities in Scotland as well. I'd say the main highlights to talk about would be Cayley in November, the Law Ball which was the biggest event, is always the biggest event. And it's such a great way to like make friends and like 
get to know people. The mooting society. Mooting is mock cases. It's a mock court situation. You get like a, a fake scenario given to you and you have to argue either for or against it. Mooting won Academic Society of the Year from DUSA, which is obviously a really big deal. They offer internal competitions, so that's when you're competing with people in the university. They offer external with other universities and then they even offer big like international stuff. So there was a group recently that just went to just outside Barcelona. It was like an international football association moot. So there's a lot of really cool opportunities to get involved if that's your kind of thing. They also have an international law society. They also have a Route 2 society, which is basically a society that explores other options for those who are so, studying a law degree, but maybe don't necessarily want to become a lawyer at the end of or it. like don't even want to go into like the legal sector. They just focus on the opportunities and what you can do with a law degree. Yeah, because you can do a lot with a law degree. You don't yeah. need to be no, it's a solicitor or a barrister. There's a lot of things you can it's do. It's definitely a gateway degree to a lot of career opportunities. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching and I, we really really hope that this was helpful to you if you're considering coming to Dundee um, we definitely recommend it thanks for watching guys